Welcome to the Team Super Dad Experts Hangout. This is our hangout where we bring in subject matter experts to uh, get their opinion and an input on, a, I guess, a topical subject, a subject that's on everyone's minds. And um, we are in this interesting time of lockdown. And as I've been saying on my um, on my socials in the Team Super Dad community, um, I've, I'm fitter than I've ever been. And that, that I've had a, a like a a long run up to this with my with my going to the gym and with my juicing and with my with um, I always eat quite healthy. I don't really buy a lot of ready made food and things like that. So it's been kind of easy for me. But I do know that a lot of people, dads, mums, everybody have have had some challenges with um, overeating, drinking uh, more than they probably ever have done. <laughs> and and so then the relationship between that and actually feeling rubbish, like people are stressed and anxious. And, um, and, you know, I'm sure some people saw this week on sort of different things being shared about domestic violence and stuff. So it all f- falls into people's general well-being and, 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 and happiness. So really excited to be able to get this group of, of um, health, nutrition and fitness experts on the, tonight's call. So I will quickly go around and introduce them by name. But, but if you want to uh, um, uh, say a little bit about yourself and introduce yourself personally, that would be awesome because you can without doubt do a better job than I can. I am going to go around the group as I see them. So first up, Matthew, good to have you here on the call tonight. Thanks, Johnny, and uh, it's a pleasure to be on. Uh, I can see there's a great panel of fantastic professionals in and around the room, so that'll be great to speak with you all and all the guys that have joined in this evening. Uh, A little bit about myself. I'm a northern lad, as you can probably tell. Um, I come from Rotherham in South Yorkshire. Uh, Background in clinical nutritional therapy, functional medicine, and uh, elements of fitness moving into dynamic areas of NLP, psychotherapy, and uh, business leadership. Awesome. To help and answer any questions that you've got. Yeah, yeah. And what, uh, just one question to kick us all off, what, in terms of your life, what was the thing that inspired you to take control of your health and fitness and what age were you? I think it's been a, a key point that I've worked on since being a young lad. I think um, from playing f- football, junior football, through until running cross country in the uh, years of my secondary school years, and then carrying that forward into my early 20s to then compete naturally in men's physique. Um, get on stage has been the key areas of me really focusing and doubling down on health and fitness. A healthy body gives a healthy mind, which altogether creates a healthy system, right? Yeah, go on, I'll fix that problem. Go on, carry on. Okay, so yeah, I mean, that in itself has inspired me. I was always kicked on with the health and fitness bit. To have a health and fitness freak, let's say. But I studied and researched a lot of areas of, let's say, functional medicine, clinical nutritional therapy over the years, and then accredited over recent years, probably talk about two or three years ago now, when I accredited in nutritional therapy, functional medicine practitioner. So they were key areas that I was, I always wanted to know that. Uh, how the, the body worked, obviously from a fitness perspective, but then understanding as I were getting into peak condition to then really dial into the health and nutrition elements as well. Nice. Love it. Uh, and is there a particular sort of audience that you, you, you work with? Um, particularly entrepreneurs, real estate investors, I, um, highly driven, middle-aged individuals that are aspiring for more and wanting to change the game really in the line. Awesome, thank you very much. If you, if you see me typing, I'm just chatting to the, to the other people in the, in the, uh, in the chat. Oh, um, so next up, going clockwise, I have Serena. Hi Serena, do you want to introduce yourself? Similar, similar sort of way that Matthew just did. 
Absolutely. Um, thank you for having me. I am a certified plant-based nutrition consultant, um, yoga teacher, and fitness trainer. Together with uh, my husband, Eugene, we run Whole Shift Wellness, a coaching company which um, specializes in bespoke programs for time-pressed leaders. We have um, over 20 years of combined experience in different fields of the health and wellness industry, transforming the well-being of over 500 professionals across five countries. And this has really allowed us to develop a proven methodology to shift you into your most fit, healthy, and confident self within one year. And, uh, well, the seed of health and wellness was planted in me at a very young age. I was probably around eight years old, when my father, who at the time was a highly successful business owner and entrepreneur who created a profession that didn't even exist before his time, he got really sick quite abruptly and ended up losing everything he'd worked so hard to acquire and develop over many years with huge repercussions on my life, obviously, but also the life of our entire extended family. And that's when I became unconsciously really present with how important health and wellness is. Uh, and from then on, I just developed a passion for it. I started to explore and, and study and, and really just learn more and more, with, predominantly around nutrition, for the simple reason that, you know, during my teenage years, I started putting on some weight and I wanted to discover how to lose it for a period of time. I got trapped into the vicious cycle of dieting. So I, I learned a lot about what not to do. Uh, and then uh, eventually in my adult years, I decided to certify as a nutrition consultant, but I've been fiercely passionate about health and wellness since I was a child, simply because I know how, how, dramatic it can be to lose it not just for the individual who's, who does lose it but also for the entire communities around them yeah awesome thank you and just to cover off as i generally do this is a team super dad call right and so sometimes people are like how come we're having women on on a on a dad's call well loads of parents single parent pages communities or whatever they're so polarized and i think it's just weird that you can have this whole group of people working and helping each other and then and yet you just the thing that they had the upset about is now completely removed and so i really love to try and involve women uh, around the team super dad hangouts and, and the conversation because I, I want that presence i want that opinion um and i want to have great women involved with team super dad so thank you for being part of this my pleasure Okay, uh, going around still clockwise. Ashley, you're next on my screen. Good evening, John. Thank you for having me. Um, I made it in the end. I was running a little bit late. Um, so I optimise the physical and mental performance of CEOs, managing directors, and business leaders. So they become more efficient in their business and get to have more fun with their family. Oh, can you hear me all right? Yeah, perfectly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, it's fine. It was a bit echo in mine. Um, yeah, so a lot of my clients across the UK, predominantly, uh, they are business leaders. And what's happened, and this was my own experience, is when you're setting up your own business, right, you know, you, you have to commit so much time, effort, and energy into, into growing it and scaling it, bringing in, you know, uh, new team members and then also leading them. Is when you're in it, it, it's really easy to start sacrificing the time you spend to look after yourself. You know, that's, that's the thing that goes first. You know, you're not going to sacrifice family time. It's, it's you. You're like the sacrificial lamb to create that business success. Um, and it's normally, most people I've found, it's normally so that five, seven year mark. They're, they're, they've been in the trenches. They've done the work. They're now sort of lifting above. The head's coming above water and they're going, right, uh, now it's time to sort me out. You know, and uh, it's really interesting because... You, I've had a hundred consultations with uh, very, very busy uh, business owners, but they're still stuck in the trenches and they know they need to do something. They really want to do it, but they just can't see how they're balancing all these plates they can fit it in. Um, and uh, you just sort of have to let them go, right, okay, come back when you're ready. Mm. Um, and that's my whole experience. Uh, I, I created uh, my, my program. Uh, for me, because I did the same. I was building and scaling my health and fitness business. And uh, it was getting busier and busier and busier. 
and you know, then had went from being single girlfriend fiance wife children you know all these different plates going on and and yeah i i i did exactly what my clients do i stopped looking after myself i piled on about three stone couldn't walk up the stairs without getting out of breath and uh and then yeah sort of it was that whole sort of penny drop moment of hang on a minute you know from an outside looking in it looks great but actually i feel terrible i look terrible i'm not happy myself and uh and yeah, that was sort of my, my tipping point to, to go, actually, there's a lot more to this than just diet and exercise. There's, there's a whole mind game that, that we have to take into account. Yeah. And I really enjoyed that conversation we had a couple of months ago where um, you spent a, a good amount of time. You were, you were explaining it to me, but it was actually really useful to me. So, good. so that was awesome as well. Uh, and finally, Tom, uh, great to have you. Last but not least, Mr. Blackman, how, how's it going? It's good, thanks. Um, my name's Tom Blackman. I'm a performance nutritionist and the author of Target Lean, which that's the only copy in existence. Don't <laughs> it's not a copy. <laughs> Don't knock a copy on it. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's printed this week, so that's the first copy I've ever had. So uh, that's my first book. Um, I'm a former competitive bodybuilder, champion bodybuilder. Got into nutrition coaching after I, I did my last show. Um, I had a career ending injury, unfortunately, so that stopped me doing uh, competitive bodybuilding for, um, for a long while. <clears throat> I had a bit of a, a resurgence and did one, one or two shows for a documentary and then decided to completely uh, stop doing bodybuilding completely for competition. And that's when I started getting into nutrition coaching. So I did the, um, up until then, I was, I was like a, what's called like a bro guy who's sort of, <laughs> this is how it's always been done and this is the myth and the folklore of how you get shredded. Um, so that was me up until that point. And then I started ed educating myself. I uh, did a um, postgraduate diploma, got a distinction in that. And now I work with generally people who, um, who have tried and failed to lose weight uh, in the past um, and have this repetitive cycle of um, they, they keep going on diets, keep failing. And then they, uh, and then they go back to a position where they're, where they don't know what they're doing and they're still doing all these, these diets. So I have a system that takes them from there to um, actually succeeding. Love it. Thank you. And you know, what I'd love to kick off with is just as a, as I guess, an introduction to this whole conversation, what for, for most people, right? What is a healthy, what is a healthy way to eat? We go to the supermarket, there's aisles and aisles of stuff ranging from the fresh stuff in one section to the completely processed ready meals in another. And, and, and one way or another, like it or not planned or otherwise, we pretty much go in and buy the same stuff every single week. <laughs> um, what, you know, what, what is a healthy, what, what is a healthy diet or, you know, in, in summary, what, 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 what balances it out? What's a good way for people to look at their, their, their overall diet and, um, and be thinking, you know, what, what should they spot in it? So like, so what is overall, what is a healthy diet and what should they be spotting as, as like obvious mistakes as, as, as an individual or family? Who's going well, first? Yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> go on, Serena, you go first. Obviously you've got a, a, a yeah, plant-based yeah, plant yeah, think... perspective, obviously. No, but see, here's the thing. And people, whenever they, whenever they, they, they hear plant-based, they think that I'm going to kind of ram it down their throat and go all radical on them. Whereas my approach is, is way milder than that. First of all, I don't think you need to switch to a hundred percent plant-based diet in order to be your healthiest self. And secondly, I think some of the confusion and misconceptions out there come from a lot of conflicting information, which tend to confuse the end customer or, or client. And, and leads to zero progress because a confused mind takes no action. Whereas I think the best way to start, to get started on making improvements, is to, to start from the principles that for the most part, everybody agrees on. And there, there's more than, than we sometimes recognize. Other than the very extreme bonkers diets out there, which I'm sure none of us are particularly fond of, most ways of eating agree on some fundamental principles such as cutting down on processed foods, you know, cutting down on refined sugars and carbohydrates, cutting down on saturated fats, you know, cutting down on junk food fundamentally. 
you know and so i think anybody that wants to take one small step in the right direction should really just start from there start eating more real food the food that looks like food you know the food that is ingredients rather than food that has ingredients and start reducing the the obvious offenders um, which is processed food junk food anything that comes in a package and contains ingredients that require a biochemical degree to be able to decipher you know yeah. and also you know, uh, excessive consumption of alcohol i think there is a lot of commonalities amongst the the most mainstream way approaches to nutrition which are the ones that I like to point out and emphasize because those are the ones that we can probably all agree on. And that's where everybody should get started, really, frankly, I think. Yeah. So taking stock of what they're eating, pretty simple, really, taking stock of what they're eating and look to actually remove some of the more junky, uh, non-natural uh, elements. Yeah. And right. how much, um, someone else, how, how much is what we eat linked to the kind of person we are like should, should we be paying attention to what kind of person we are what sort of lifestyle we're eating uh, living in terms of what we're eating yeah i think in terms of when we're looking at what foods we uh eating we can also take into consideration how that will link with not only the foods that we take on board but our eating habits and I think it really starts from, like Serena was saying there, just expanding on that, the basic principles and the habits that we keep. And that will go into both nutrition and lifestyle intervention, of course. So um, ensuring that we hydrate well on a day-to-day -day basis and keep good hydration levels, as well as being able to look at our sleep pattern because that comes into our diet of course how we're resting and recovering it's not just about the food that we put into our mouth it's how we digest that food how we rest how we recover and the the intervention that we have with our habits that we keep and i think most people are just looking for a little bit of clarity aren't they around their nutrition and what they like to go back to what serena was saying um what's out there because like you said there's quite a, a, a confusion out there for, for some with a lot of information out there in the realms of social media and online of course today being able to just bring it back to basic principles and having basic habits keeping healthy and looking at getting rid of the junk food um, and not necessarily having uh, an overconsumption of good food because that can still of course not be healthy to have too yeah, like yeah piling your plate up with like a mountain yeah. of healthy food is still yeah. a mountain of food right? mm, of course and it's gonna see us put weight on of course uh, so like i say when it comes down to being able to understand both a healthy diet and nutrition it starts with basic principles which is of course uh, the factors of hydration sleep nutrition vegetables of course good protein levels yeah good i've quality. started uh it's been about a year now but literally the first thing i do when i wake up is go probably to the toilet but uh go and get a pint of water so there's mm. uh, uh, as both as a way to start your day but also to flush, yeah. flush yeah. out the toxins start. and that's a pretty basic concept um it, and it just it's got to be healthier than a coffee or it's got to be healthier than having no drink for an hour. Um, and, and putting, putting that as a, as a practice in, into my life. I've got a, a, an app on my phone now called streak and I, I might sound strange, but just clicking mm. it and saying, I've done that this morning. Yeah. Um, has, has, has been absolutely phenomenal. Mm. Tom, what, what in, in taking uh, what Matthew just said there, people's general awareness, they don't know what they're eating, right? We don't like if, if breakfast was the example, we eat cereal or we eat breakfast bars or we drink coffee or what? Is it just a complete uh, lack of awareness about what we're actually eating um, and, and how that uh, contributes positively or negatively towards our health as well? Yeah, so um, I might um, 
sort of um, have a different view to what the other uh, well that's, that's the whole point of having loads of people on is to have is to have a mixed set of views yeah 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 so the um uh for, for me people's interpretation of what what is healthy generally tends to go against what they're trying to accomplish because most people are trying to eat healthy to try and lose weight that's that is, you ask someone oh what are you doing to lose weight oh i'm eating healthy it always is i'm trying to eat healthy to lose weight and then what comes the problem then is that healthy becomes avocados and nuts and olive oil and salmon which yeah they're great foods full of nutrients proteins vitamins all that sort of stuff but they're massively overladen with calories and most people don't get that the calorie load of these healthy foods potentially makes them gain weight uh, and then they don't understand why they gain weight eating healthy um and and on the flip side of that um have you, have you seen the documentary the super size me documentary yeah jason vale oh no no the yeah, that's super juicy. Oh, no, the guy who goes to the, the, yeah, mcdonald's yeah. and eats mcdonald's every yeah. day yeah. yeah right so there was another one an ultimate one done of that where the guy actually ate within his calorie limits and he had a protein shake as well and went to the gym so lived a healthy life you know healthy lifestyle yeah but ate the majority of his food from McDonald's, ate within his calories, and he lost body fat. He improved his um, HDL ratio, and actually it, all his health markers went up as a result of him losing weight and eating junk food, essentially. Now, wow. while that's not something that people can do, really, because most people would just overeat if they did that, he tightly controlled everything, but he lived on paper an unhealthy diet with a healthy lifestyle, and because he ate less calories, his health actually improved. So there is a real sort of flip side of the coin there is what is healthy, what you're trying to accomplish. Yeah. And again, that comes down to knowledge, doesn't it? Basically, um, knowledge. It, it, it baffles me, right? Obviously, a lot of the stuff we learn at school, all really important. But there's fundamentally some things in life that we could do with knowing, like managing our finances, what eating properly look, looks like, um, how to communicate or even how to have a, a, you know, a relationship, how to communicate, you know, a, a conflict resolution and, and things like that. Um, Ashley, with, with your, uh, I'm going to, I know you were talking about your, your work with executives and stuff, but also yeah. your, you've got your kids um, fitness channel yes. and, and your kids uh, are, are, are generally dressed up as a superhero, but with you every day. We try. Um, you know, when talking about our kids and everything else that everyone just said, balancing what they want and what they need and, 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 and how parents can fit around that. How much of a challenge is, is that? And how much of that is, a, is driven by a lack of knowledge? Huge challenge. I think um, I want to add something to this, but from a, a, then a slightly different perspective, because yeah. obviously um, everyone else so far has then spoken about healthy eating and taking this. And, and I agree with everybody on that. But I think from my perspective, and when I, I look from a, maybe a neuroscience perspective, is first of all a lot of people um have an idea of what dieting is oh i'm going on a diet i'm doing this diet i'm doing that diet you know whether it is a plant-based diet whether it is um uh, whatever type of diet there are loads right but it's it comes down to the fact that we're always on a diet uh, and this I, I find this is quite a big aha moment for a lot of people to say well you're always on a diet what do you mean no i'm not i mean what I like at the moment but that's the thing. As soon as you consume something, you're on a diet. So you, you, you're always dieting. It's just, are you choosing foods that are having a positive impact on how you look and how you feel and how you perform or a negative? And then that leads on to what's your relationship like with food, which is always an interesting what do you mean relationship. Well, do you ram it down as quickly as possible? Are you always eating on the go between meetings? Um, you know, you actually, you know, do you really taste it when you eat it or is it just in two mouthfuls and then you're on to the next thing? And I just find actually just even before sometimes you talk about making this change or making that change, you know, eating more plant-based, eating more protein is slow down, chew it a bit more. What does it taste like? What's the texture like? And, and just by slowing down of naturally you then stand, you, you feel uh, fuller, quicker, um, you tend to actually go, actually, I really don't like this food. So I think it's just maybe adding a slightly different dimension there that it's all well and good what food choices you're making, but you, uh, you can change your diet. But if your relationship with food is still terrible, it's still not going to have the long-term impact that you desire. Yeah. So it's teaming up 
the right type of foods, whichever that is for you, because there's no right or wrong answer. Uh, and I think as, as Thomas said brilliantly, you know, there are people out there that are taking on loads of heavily processed foods because they're staying within their calories. They're, they're getting results. Um, there's two or three um, very well-known YouTubers who are um, health professionals as well. Their diets are atrocious. You know, when we talk about healthy eating, you know, they're always in McDonald's or um, what's the donuts, Krispy Kreme donuts and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yet they look, you know, they've got low body fat percentage. Um, so you just, we've all, I think we all agree there's loads of misinformation out there. So getting educated is key, but just even things like slowing down, taking a breath between each mouthful, chewing your food, your food thoroughly. Is this actually, do I really enjoy eating this? You know, when you actually start slowing down, you, you, you start, you eat more consciously and you get to start making a few different choices. Yeah. I hope that helps. I hope that maybe no, no, that's, that's, that's really dimension. useful. No, that's really useful because, um, you know, what, what I, I was hoping to cover this kind of stuff and, and uh, that's why I specifically called it eat, eat right, feel great. Um, and people don't think about what they're eating and don't connect why they don't feel great with, with what they eat. And they, it's almost like food is a, a means to an end rather than something that is part of our body and part of our success strategies, part of our, 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 our happiness as, as, as much as anything still. Um, so if, you know, maybe you could all tell me a little bit about, about that connection between food and, and our general happiness, our general ability to, to, to get through the day and be, be successful and, 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 and why that's so important. I think this really ties in well with what has been said so far because, um, yes, it's true. I mean, the, the very basic principle of, of weight loss is that you need to take in less calories than what you require in order to lose weight. And you can achieve that through eating anything. It doesn't matter. You can lose weight eating from McDonald's for sure. As long as you're taking in less calories than what is your daily requirement, you will lose weight. Uh, and that's why only focusing on weight loss as the outcome of healthy nutrition, it uh, leads to, it may lead you astray. And I, and I love the topic, how you've labeled it, because it's about feeling a certain way and not just looking a certain way. Because having a six pack doesn't mean that you're healthy. People with six packs get, get heart attacks all the time and, and die prematurely all the time, sadly. So that's not a mark of good health. Whereas feeling healthy from the inside and out, that might be a way greater marker for, 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 good, for good health. And so um, I love what has been said about developing a relationship with the food that you're eating, because then you're a, you're, you kind of almost learn to speak the language of your body. Your body is speaking to you all the time. It's sending signals all the time. It's telling you what it needs all the time. It's telling you if that junk food meal that you just ate did the trick or not. You know, The body doesn't speak in terms of calories, actually. It speaks in terms of, of nutrients. Calories are man-made. The body needs, needs nutrients rather than just, than just calories. And I have found and I have seen, I found in my life and I've seen in my practice that this massive shift happens in people's life when they start paying attention to how they're eating and what they're eating and eating food that is real nutritious food that is full of nutrients because it's a feeling that starts from the inside and out and it transcends just physical, the, bare, the sheer physical appearance, which like I said, is not necessarily the only marker for success and i see this massive shift that takes pay, place in their lives that filters through all areas of their lives you know because it's really actually about um how you take care of yourself how much you value yourself and how in tune you are with your body are you fighting against it or are you taking the best possible care of it and and then the rest happens as a byproduct of that. So the weight loss happens as a byproduct of that. Getting lean and fit happens as a byproduct of that. But you, and, and, and that's, I think, what we should educate people to develop more is, is really this relationship with themselves that, that kind of inspires them to harness the tool to take the best possible care of themselves so that they can feel healthy from the inside and out rather than just look good on the outside. Yeah. And does that come from literally, is it like some people 
could eat red meat quite well and be happy and other people by their body type or size or gender would be better off eating less meat and more fish. Is, is there a level of awareness and knowledge about what is good for us as an individual or, or is that taking it to a level that most people don't need to go to? Well, most people probably need to start from way lower hanging fruits, especially yeah. right now, you know, which is cutting down, you know, chocolate at 11 o'clock at night and like two bottles of wine by 3 p.m. You know, I think for the, for the most part, given the current circumstances, you can probably start from way more generic improvements than what is the specific macros that okay, is going right. to that is going to lead you to greater success but if you plateau or if you're trying to achieve things to the next level then you might want to look at at at, at the more technical kind of bit of information yeah i uh i've got i use my fitness pal so i i log all the things i eat so i can see what kind of calories i do and i got my fitbit so i see how many calories i'm burning and i'm quite a thin person and i'm and i want to get well, I'm very fit. I'm just, I just, I just don't build mass very, very easily. So I'm kind of aware about how many calories I need to take on board, but I, I probably need to take on more protein if I want to build, um, build size. I mean, Matthew and, and Tom, you're, you're pretty, uh, no disrespect actually. <laughs> Oh, I, I, I've seen I've seen Matthew and Tom's uh, shirt shirt off pictures on their on their profiles. Um, is they're old pictures, mine. Is what they're old pictures. Oh, old pictures, <laughs> right? Okay, cool, right? Um, you know, is 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 it right sometimes that we do, we we should be eating more? You know, like if if our body if our body type is is that we're a bit too thin or or we or we're exercising quite a lot, should we be eating more? I um, do you know what? Yeah, there's um, th- there's there's a saying that w- w- when people say I'm, I've stopped losing weight or stop you know getting in shape, uh, and there's always this thing of oh you need to eat more to lose to lose body fat. I'm sure everyone's heard that you're not eating enough to lose body fat. You're not losing any more fat because you're not eating enough, which seems a bit silly. But um, when you understand why that happens, is most people when they start a diet and with and this is without a coach, so without anybody here coaching them. Most people will go, well, I need to lose some weight, weight to get into shape. What do I do? I'll tell you what, I'll just cut out carbs because that's, that's the enemy, carbs. Or I'll cut out fats because fat's the enemy. So they'll find something just to eliminate from their diet. And generally what will happen is they drop calories too quickly. The body doesn't like massive shifts in terms of homeostasis where it is, where it is normally. If you drop the calories too quick, you get a kickback from that where the body starts to shut down certain um, non-essential functions, I used to say. So although you need to have what's called your RMR, which is a resting metabolic rate to keep you alive, other things like exercising and walking around, so you, what's called your NEAT and your EAT activity, uh, that's exercise and your non-exercise activity, that starts to get curtailed by the body. It starts to make you more lazy. And, and anybody who's done a diet will, will get this, where they've sat on the sofa watching a some program it ends and because they're so tired from dieting they can't be bothered to go and get the remotes they end up watching the thing on trains for half an hour before they decide to get up <laughs> everybody's done that when they've dieted and, and and that's the problem is that the body starts to slow you down a little bit to compensate for the deficit you've created and and, and, th- and that's where most people go wrong and and in that situation they possibly should be eating a bit more so it's not as severe a situation they put themselves in and then the body is accustomed to losing that little bit of that little bit of weight. Um, there's um, in terms of what Suna was saying about eating f- from the inside out. Yeah, do you know what? I totally get that because when I was bodybuilding, I was literally just I would eat to a function. So I need this much protein, carbs, and Matt knows what I'm talking about because he's done shows. You know, you say, "Well, I need that much protein, that much carbs, and yeah. then as little fat as possible to get into shape." And that, and you just ate for function. And now I arguably am in better off season stroke, not dieting shape from eating more greens and more veg and a bit more fruit and being a bit more varied with what I'm eating and my fruit and stuff. Then I'm not focusing on the function of the food. Uh, and, and, and that sort of thing, I think may think again, a whole, a wholesome approach to your nutrition and having a little bit of fruit, a little bit of greens and, and, but find the stuff that you like to eat you know not everything is based on kale smoothies or you have to eat broccoli it's finding 
there's loads of greens and loads of fruits and loads of protein that you can find to eat. You don't, there's no superfood that will help you get into this, this optimal shape. There's loads of foods available. And it's finding what works for you is what the, is the key, not what works for, say, someone else who's, who's done that. And they say, oh, you must eat this because this, this is how we get lean. Yeah. And I guess for, for Matthew and, and Ashley, that working with those busy executives or those high performance people, when, when they're burning their adrenaline levels and, 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 and energy levels and all those kind of those uh, chemicals in our body that, 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 that fire from emotions, um, food's obviously a key part in keeping level headed, keeping clear headed, keeping good manager of, of, of people. Um, what, why does that go out the window? Why, why it seems obvious that you'd pay attention to it, but, but it goes out the window. Is that, that's pretty common, right? I think that comes back to, like I say, the, the busyness within the days of how one tends to operate and their challenges with time management, the challenges with being able to, work on those basic habits there again, what I'll come back to, um, being able to ensure that they're getting their nutrition foundations laid. And that in itself is a big part of being able to transform the health massively, is to really double down on those nutrition elements and working, like Serena said, from the inside out, as well as being able to eat and like Tom said, enjoy some of the foods and being able to find what works for them. Whilst they're in that busy stage of operating, whether it's been business or high-performing leadership roles or managerial roles, they're ultimately focused on getting the job done and effectively working hours on end. And from experience, understanding that, being able to ensure that we lay quality health foundations, nutrition, and get getting a good quality of, let's say, protein turnover to, to ensure that they're better in the, the protein intake, to ensure that they're bringing on good quality macronutrients and micronutrients to there again eat from the inside, like what Serena said, to then get that energy out and hydrate themselves quality. And so, and what, then, sorry, to, sorry to cut in, but what is a macro and micronutrient? Oh, to break it down into to, uh, a macronutrient, it'll be a bigger function or a bigger element, let's say, as a, as a nutrient, and then a micronutrient is a smaller element. So if you yeah, look but like at like what, what kind of food, if I'm, if I'm having, so if, yeah. if, that's, if that's important, like where, where, where am I picking those so, things up from? So if, you, if you're understanding a macronutrient, looking at things like protein to fats to carbohydrates, to then you look at your micronutrients, you look at smaller elements. So if you're wanting to understand food, it'd be carbohydrates, such as potatoes, pasta being the macronutrients, to proteins, looking at chicken to fish, certain proteins to fats, looking at things like cheese and coconut oils for example and um, good quality fats uh, through to fibers of course which is like your greens your vegetables and then into your micronutrients of course so like i say when it comes down to being able to better nutrition for high performing individuals it, it really comes down to the fact that let's say the the busyness is one of the big challenges that we we see and being able to intervene with good quality nutrition to better one's health that's we have to bring in to to obviously accommodate those challenges that we come across so being able to lay good quality foundations of going back to what i was saying earlier quality sleep quality hydration quality nutrition habits and so what so we're talking like seven hours a night eight hours a night yeah sleep? we're looking at things like seven to eight hours good quality sleep as well not yeah. just the length of time it's not the hours that you sleep it's what you put in the hours isn't it yeah and hydration what's that like two two and a half liters yeah, a day so looking at good quality hydration levels of being able to flush the body through with quality fluids from um two three liters of water yeah the water and stuff yeah yeah and uh just thank you man in, just to interject there the, yeah. the people always vilify uh, coffee as being dehydration and diet coke and stuff that's like being dehydration 
but what is the main ingredient in coffee and diet coke 99 percent is water yeah. so it's that it's it, it is a fallacy that's hot a lot of people hold that that coffee dehydrates you it it, it does slightly because of caffeine but you get more water than you lose from the dehydration so it is perfectly fine to have a coffee as a hydration exercise in the morning yeah uh, thank you thank you tom and and actually how much of this is is habit i think i said sort of tapping more into your area it's yeah. it's 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 bad habits it's good habits and then we all know how hard it is to create a new a new positive habit yeah well i think first of all there's no such thing as a bad habit and there's no such thing as a good habit we have habits and again going back to what we're talking about food um and the result you get so again is smoking a bad habit well if you're willing for the trade-off it's not does that make sense? Now, if you're willing that the trade-off is, well, actually, you know, smoking can cause X, Y, Z, P, Q. If you're happy with that trade-off, it's not a bad habit to you. So you've just got habits that give you a specific result. Obviously, we know if you change your eating habits, you exercise more, um, the chance are you're going to lose weight, you're going to tone up and, and you're going to live for longer. So there's no such thing as a good or bad habit. It's just what result is that habit giving you? So let's segue that onto then talking about creating a, a new habit. Business is a habit. Is a habit. Becoming busy and being busy it is habitual. Running around like headless chicken is just a habit. Um, so we have to look at how do we change the habit of business, which I, I won't go into now because that's not really what we're here to talk about tonight. But whenever we are looking at creating a new habit, consistency is king. Because the only way we create a new habit is by doing the new thing regularly enough to become habitual. Yeah. So just like how we brush our teeth. How we brush our teeth is a habit. So it's looking at how quickly can you form this new habit. And this is where everyone is different. Everyone's unique. You know, you could say to some people, depending upon their mindset um, and their, their drivers, someone could overhaul their nutrition in one go you know they could change everything all in one go and they'd run with it it'd be it'd be like sprinting up a mountain they'd run with it and they'd change it all and other people would go i can't i can't do that and there'd be no consistency they might do it for a day and go i can't do this it's not going to work for me and they sort of panic um, or become completely overwhelmed yeah and then and then what you're saying is and then everything goes out the window basically. everything goes out the window yeah. yeah and and i think we see this a lot with a lot with the, the diet the mainstream diets we see people go on it's changing it's overhauling everything at once and they do it for maybe a week or 10 days consistently and then they miss the odd day and slowly they miss more days and then they just stop doing it so it's all about what can you consistently do every day and for some people that might just be right i'm going to try and eat a little bit more protein with my breakfast, my lunch, my evening meal. And they'll do, you know, do that consistently for 21 days, 28 days. And they'll go, right, I'm getting used to this now. And this is feeling more like the norm. It's not feeling weird or difficult or challenging. It's, yeah. I'm just, I'll go instead of um, having that uh, cereal, I'm going to scramble some eggs. And I'm used to that for breakfast. That's now my norm. And then you can add in the next bit, which might be, I'm going to start having a bit more, uh, greens with my evening meal so it's really it's it's constantly asking yourself for that feedback of am i being consistent am i doing this thing consistently because when you do the thing consistently eventually it will become habitual yeah and you said to me today matthew that's where results come from you know it's consistency 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 yeah yeah, yeah. and how much of this is like a palette change as i've heard that mentioned as well before like I mean, someone who juices, right? I juice, uh, juice that fits into perfectly some of the topics you just mentioned there. Most people would say, how on earth do you possibly find time to do that? And okay, well now, now I just kind of do. And when I'm in, and when I'm in Lidl, I look like a bit of a nutter because I'm buying six packets of celery at the moment because I'm doing, I'm having celery every single morning. Um, cause that's what they, they're all nuts about that in America at the moment. So I thought I would, I would curiously see what would happen if, if after my glass of water, I drink <laughs> celery juice each, each morning for, 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 for a month. Um, and the taste is actually all right for me, but I know that when I first started juicing, just juicing something like celery would have, would have tasted minging. Um, I, I can, I can tell you that the worst thing I ever juiced was a red cabbage. That was <laughs> absolutely <laughs> disgusting <laughs> couldn't drink that couldn't drink that 
<laughs> but um, but yeah, so it's it's what seems undoable to start with when you're doing it over time and you start to feel the benefits suddenly it becomes part of, of that routine. Wow. The reward is part of that, the, 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 the turning something into a habit. Um, and I guess finally on top of that is when people start to actually say, you look good or what are you up to? So then you get the, um, what's it affirmation or like you get the positive affirmations from others, which actually really reinforces the, the habit. What just, um, as we sort of move into the, into the, into the last part, um, I did have a couple of questions here. Um, which I'll just, I'll just try and make sure I bring in. Um, um, it was, here we go. So two questions. The, I'll flip them around from the way he asked it, actually. It was David Ng, uh, a, a business um, friend and associate from Maidstone. So he asked, the best way for a family to keep fit together during lockdown, well, I know what Ashley's going to say. <laughs> um best way for a family is to keep fit during lockdown and what can we all do at the same time? And then kind of dovetailing into that, what's the best and easy, healthy way to cook for two adults and two seven year olds at the same time. So if, if it, if it, if it fits to put it all together, let's, let's do that. But, um, um, you know, maybe just share, share what you think would be your answers to that. And, um, and if, and if we get any disagreement, that's perfect. <laughs> Ashley, you go first, even though, even though you were just talking, you go first. Cause, cause, uh, Ashley's been doing a, uh, a dad and kids workout. Have, have you missed a day yet? Have we done it every day? Uh, we ha we have missed a couple of days. Last week was, um, a challenge mainly because um our eldest wasn't feeling particularly well yeah so when we but we're, we're back with a vengeance tomorrow but um, it's been it's been brilliant and my kids have done it a couple of days um um i'm sure you would love the profile of of, of mr wicks but um well, it's it's definitely fair to say yours is a bit more kid friendly than than, than joe oh thanks yeah we've just literally uh my eldest son who is seven at the end of this month now um, we were chatting when obviously lockdown started happening. We were trying to explain what was going on. And, and he said, oh, well, daddy, he doesn't quite understand what I do. Oh, daddy, you, you do exercise, you exercise people. C can you exercise me? And maybe we could do it with some of my friends. Yeah. And so that's kind of spiraled a little bit. And we've been doing, um, other than last, uh, last week, um, sort of fun family fitness sessions at two o'clock in our Facebook group that as of this week, we're going to start doing it live on a Facebook page and, and try something a bit different, but it's just about having fun yeah. um, and not being too serious. So we're jumping about, we're trying to find some fun names for various different exercises. We're trying, you know, we've done various different themed workouts from uh, dinosaur themes to Avengers to Superman to Mike the night, just stuff where they, it, he's jumping about more than anything else. He's not really following me. Um, it, it, I'm like talking to a brick wall sometimes he'll only do what he wants yeah. to do but just jump about you know don't take it seriously have a bit of fun you know we're always trying to make um, uh, props um, or if he's got one of his dressing up you know outfits whether it's a night or whatever like, you know, it just move about prance about laugh and joke uh, don't take it too seriously um, no, but, for, but for the parent to feel like they're, they're keeping fit as well they do want to get their heart rate up a bit and they yeah. do want to actually uh, clearly, clearly we're not talking about a full workout here, but yeah. some level of, of a squat or a burpee yeah. or a press up well, or a sit up that, that run on the spot for 30 seconds. For, yeah. yeah. You know, I mean, it, you, although we've given our workouts different names and different themes, you know, they're a lot of the same thing. So, you know, running on the spot, every superhero, you know, can run really, really quickly. Um, you know, squatting and smashing the ground like Hulk. Um, I'm trying to think of other ones we've done. Um, oh, like the dark, rocket, the dark, rocket man on the floor when you do rocket the, man on the floor, yeah, you know, yeah. dino stomps, uh, you know, which is a bit like, you know, just stomping you know, bear crawls and all this kind of stuff. It's just, and I, I'll tell you what, I know some of the parents that say, mesh saying flip neck, Ashley, you know, that I, I'm more worn out than the kids. <laughs> yeah. Um, and the kids are having fun cause they're laughing at mummy and daddy, you know, and every, it's, it's just gotta be a bit of fun. Yeah. Um, as soon as it starts getting a bit serious, uh, that's why we didn't do anything last week. So I thought I could make him do it. He's not feeling very well. I could be cruel um, and make him do it, but actually he's not feeling well. So what's the point? We'll just have a week off. We've got, I think we've done 25, 26 workouts already. So there's enough for everyone for a week just to go, yeah, we're going to yeah, do this. Yeah. But yeah, you get someone who's relatively unfit and hasn't moved for a while um, doing some bunny hops 
or running on the spot or crawling around the floor. That's a good amount of exercise. They'll soon notice start it, with. yeah. Yeah. And Matthew, going from that to uh, what was your challenge for your community? Is it how many press ups a day? We put together a challenge, I think the fitness and business community, in doing a thousand press ups. <laughs> Uh, to to see that was the parameter set it was recorded to see how many could hit that parameter on a consistent basis but it, there again that was something that built in a consistent habit for people and got great feedback and there was trying to there was a bit of competition in there as well and it was for 30 days um to to just help them um alongside structure and uh, the the full on focus to adapt that transferably into the business world. For yeah, them. and I I can see if, if we're talking about how you get your kids involved with that, um, having a chart, having a family contest. Yeah. You know, if you're not very fit, I dare say there'll be certain families whose, whose <laughs> kids can now out press up their their mum or dad quite you know even from from the start. So I think you know taking what you did with your community put in the you gamified it you put some put some put some risk in there who's going to come last yeah. made uh, sure everything was uh, yeah like i say put a, a little bit of a competition together and then we run one recently which was 100 squats to 100 press ups to 100 dips a day for 30 days um and being able to to work on that and see if they're the parameters set see if they could be hit and how many times it could be yeah. so I think that's a great suggestion for families and and Tom what about your your boy so he's seven right uh, so Jacob's four. Oh, sorry um, my apologies yeah. four. okay so that's quite young yeah four but yeah so we um so so he uh, we're, I'm a uh, single parent so he yeah. is with me half the week so he does the exercise with me and he does like the gardening with his mum. Right, so right. we do um, I've got a little garden and we I've got cones so we do like lifting and carrying and like lunging and squirting. Really? And he's got a little lunch box that he sticks on his back. And I've got like a massive six pack bag, which I used to yeah. use for bodybuilding, carrying all my food in. So we load them up. He has a little bit of weight. I have like obviously loads. And then we do like, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> obviously. And then we do squats and lunges and press ups and stuff like that. And, um, uh, and today we did sprints with the water pistols. We went around the common. We had both had water pistols and we were sprinting and chasing each other. Um, so we did like 10 seconds running, shooting each other, then 10 seconds running. Oh, so, I love that. We, so we gamified it as well, the same as how Matt's doing and, yeah. um, and how Ashley's doing. Yeah. It works well, gamifying stuff. I mean, instilling that at a young age, I know that my, my dad's not exactly the, the fittest fitness person in the world but we used to he used to run around the orchard and i remember as a young kid we used to do it together and then i remember as a slightly older kid him not but me carrying it on um and so that was kind of ingrained in me from the start and serena as a yoga practitioner i'm sure there's a variety of ways that families can practice yoga together and feel the benefits of that is there yeah absolutely we've turned our uh, facebook group into a little bit of a virtual uh, um, studio literally and because um, people were really uh, thirsty for accountability and for that for that community that they lost all of a sudden for not being able to go to the gym or or to the yoga studio etc and yeah we do plenty of yoga in there but interestingly as we're talking about ways for families to stay fit the most popular class that we run in our private group now is a cardio dance off class so we literally bust out tunes for 30 minutes and dance to our heart's content, like as if nobody was watching and people love it. You know, it's just one of the most fun bits of the week that the parents tune in and get the kids involved. And it, it, there is no structure to it. You can't get it wrong. And it's a brilliant cardio workout. And I to me, it's actually one of the ways that I motivate myself to get my work out in when I don't feel like doing it. The moment I put on a good tune, because music has a massive uplifting power, and I simply start moving my body, I simply start that momentum of kind of kicking off all the right, uh, all the right um, hormones through my body, then 
inevitably, even if I tell myself I'll only dance, inevitably I'll then feel inspired to continue on and do a full blown workout. Yeah. But that I find that to be very, very effective uh, way to just get going and start building that momentum. Yeah, so literally as a family, blimey, a, a, a disco light from Amazon um, and, your, and, your, and YouTube on your TV and you've got a party and, your, and half an hour, 25 minutes of dancing is, is a workout, yeah. For sure. <laughs> I, I dare say you're going to, all of these things have a caveat for what age your kids are, doesn't it? Teenagers <laughs> and uh, any of these suggestions could, could be quite tricky. Is that, is that your husband on your Facebook page doing that insane yoga? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I love it. I'm like, because you could see his six pack down the front. Can't you? Well, he's he's a, he's he's a semi professional. He was a semi professional bodybuilder turned yoga. Oh, champion. okay. So he has he he's been through the full spectrum. From he used to be three times. He used to be almost Tom size. He used to be three times the size that he is now. And and Five then when four. he <laughs> <laughs> different eyes, but. <laughs> And now, and then it was, the, the more he got into professional yoga and, and yoga championship, obviously, the, the more he kind of leaned on to, in a different direction. But he's retained an incredible amount of, of muscle built, you know. Yeah. He doesn't look like a box standard yogi, for sure. Yeah. And I guess just finally, guys, going back to the, to the nutrition stuff and, and, and um, uh, the question, um, is it Dan? Yeah. yeah dan david uh, david thank you ashley um i need i need well, i need some food recommendations for memory <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> although i am aware it's actually a mind trick not a food trick um so so david was asking about healthy tasty dinners for two adults and two seven-year-olds I, I know speaking for myself um i know that's about finding stuff that my kids like um making sure that i stretch their palate so we're not always eating the same things. Even my boy, who is slightly less adventurous than his sister, um, I will challenge him with some new things from time to time and, and make sure he has a, a, a bigger than a pinprick uh, of, 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 of taste on, on, on that new thing. But um, uh, equally, coming back to those regular things that they like, kids love familiarity, they love, they love routine. And... Um, I'd say when I, when I do introduce something new, rather than give them that as their whole dinner, I'll normally cook it for myself and give them a taste. And then hopefully they like it and I haven't freaked them out by, you know, it's that or nothing, you know, <laughs> kind of, kind of thing. Um, can, you know, have you got any tips or, or suggestions yourself about healthy, quick dinners? Um, what, maybe just share what you do in, 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 in your life that, um, that, that, that could work for families as well. Go on, Ashley. I can see your... Okay. Um, I think you, you, you've kind of got it spot on, really. It's getting them involved in the process. And I think that, that loops back nicely to what, what I've said uh, is, is about your relationship with food. You know, and, and a lot of kids grow up with a lot of issues around food because their relationship is rubbish. Because they were never involved in the whole, you know, the, the deciding what we're going to eat. You know, maybe the cooking process. Um, you know, we, we, we get our boys joining in as much as possible, even if it's just what we'll pick a veg, you know, oh, here's how, you know, you can peel yeah. it, you know, um, you know, you pick one veg, you pick another, you pick, and, and again, a challenge, gamify it. What do you think we could make with this? Yeah. Um, I appreciate it depends then upon the age of your children as well, but, or baking, uh, my, my wife loves to bake, whether it's bread or cakes, get them involved in that as well. No, I totally um, agree about that. Getting getting them involved. Just get yeah. that, and that's it. And 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 again, I think you. I can't really add to what you said about not. Then um, it's this or nothing. You know, or you. You know, we're eating this tonight, whether you like it or not. Going to ram it down your throat. Um, you know, that doesn't work. Cause that just then builds a much more negative relationship with with food. So yeah, I think you've got it spot on. And um, I can't really add anything more, to be honest. Well, that's lucky. I'm doing well, okay. I'm good. Um, and what about anyone else? Any, any other suggestions for other people in your experiences of working with clients? Um, Serena, obviously, you're, I love how Serena calls her clients shifters. I love, yeah. I love that. They make the shift. Yeah, I mean, um, I find that one solution that tends to be quite successful is, is if you make the main dish something that you know everybody likes and then you do little add-ons 
for each individual preference. So, uh, and this kind of tends to work well as we educate people towards eating more plant-based foods as well. They think, oh, but my husband likes chicken or my wife's going to want th these and the other. And he's like, well, just prepare the chicken, but instead of serving it in the dish, put it on a side and then you guys can all share one big main big pot of say a pasta with marinara sauce and roasted vegetables or you know a vegetable fajitas etc and then those who want to add their own individual little components can do so individually and then everybody feels catered for and feels like their own individual taste is catered for but you're not having to cook each individual meals for uh, for every person separately that tends to be a technique that we f we find works well for for parents, and some of these some of the dishes that are most popular for family, obviously, like I said, pasta dishes tend to be incredibly popular and very very easy to make, but also Mexican food lends itself very well to family meals because you know then the kids can make their own little yeah they're playing and making it yeah and, you know you put all the food in the middle and that because we go back to what you were saying the more you can get them involved in the process the better. And the actual combining the things together gets them really excited. They can kind of feel like they have a sense of ownership over what they over what they're eating. Yeah, yeah, totally. And we got Tom. Where are you from exactly? Where you you you're a little bit from up north, are you as well? I um, originally was raised in Worcester, Worcester uh, which right. is close to Birmingham, and then okay. um, I moved down to Bristol after. Right. That. Okay. So, so not exactly north, but there's always the sort of the classic cliches about northern northern diets, uh, Matthew. <laughs> there, there you go, meat and meat and potatoes kind of thing. Although that is classically me. Give me meat, meat and meat and two veg, and I'm happy. Um, <laughs> um, you know, like food for families, getting people to be a bit more adventurous. What, what, yeah. what can you guys say about that? I think in terms of the the adventurous element, I always. I, Come from a farming background, so my granddad, gamekeeper and farmer, and done a lot of um, farming, turkeys, pigs, the rest of it, agricultural work. And since an early age, there was an intervention of nutrition because, like Ashley was saying, I was able to get involved with all the preparing of the vegetables to the uh, meat to. Um, being able to then know what relative food was all about and it's an education from the ground up as a child really to understand food and like you say being able to make sure that that um there's bits there's different variations so like you say before it expands your palate and having different parts and trying this and trying that and as I was growing up my, my granddad was trying me on different meats trying me on different vegetables just to find out what worked and what didn't and you found out what was good food and what wasn't and uh, I found from that that uh, I was able to expand my palate and um, my knowledge and it was an education from my granddad but I think for others um, it's getting involved getting involved with that cooking as children and families together to get involved with the the preparation of the evening meal, for example, just one meal, just yeah. get involved with that preparation. And the, the, the children will then start to, to be aware and more aware of what good food looks like on the plate. Yeah, habits for life. Totally, mm. habits for life. Tom, anything to add on that one? Um, no, the, uh, what Serena was saying about the sort of tapas style nature of stuff works really well for families with... Um, we, we, uh, when I was... Um, uh, before when I was with Nick's, uh, when I was with uh, Jacob's mum, Nick, um, her family is like gluten intolerant and like peanut allergies and and like there's all sorts of things they couldn't have. So we couldn't cook six different meals. We just put stuff on plates and then you would like grab it all off and then make your own stuff, and and that worked really well. Um, I'm, I'm, I must say I've sort of failed with Jacob a little bit because he will only eat about five foods at the moment. <laughs> no matter what I put in front of him, he will just not. He's just like bananas, milk, toast, all, all the sort of the white foods, and uh, he used to eat all sorts of stuff, and all of a sudden just stopped. Yeah. So I, I, I can only say I've failed as a nutritionist in that. <laughs> 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 
you have to take your take your nutritionist hat off and just leave your parent hat on and like as long as he's eating something i'm happy well apparently when i was i spoke to my parents about this and apparently when i was a kid all i would eat was bacon and eggs for about two years so i can't remember that but apparently so so hope there's hope for him <laughs> i think that's what mr strong ate in the mr men wasn't it it's like yeah plate eggs. full of eggs yeah 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 Guys, so awesome. Uh, such great conversation. Um, um, it's it, Like I said, I, I do the podcast. It's great to spend an hour chatting to someone and really dig deep into, into subjects. But equally, this uh, format is a really nice opportunity for people to get a mixture of opinions and different voices, different cultures, perspectives, professional kind of direction. So thanks so much for your giving your time and, and sharing so generously. Obviously I've realized you've all got your different businesses and interests. If you want to just share where, where people can get in touch with you, if, if, if they've enjoyed what you've had to say, um, by all means, just go for it. Let's, uh, what do we went start with Tom this way? Go backwards around the other way. Tom, where can people find and connect with you? Tell us about your book. Uh, easiest way is on Instagram, Tom Blackman underscore nutrition. Um, there's loads of like free information and videos and all sorts on there. Uh, and my website, bkmnutrition.com, loads of stuff on there as well. Brilliant. Ashley? Yeah, um, I tend to spend a lot of my time on LinkedIn. Um, so just Ashley Bishop and you'll find me there. Or they, 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 do they have like the hashtags at the end, don't they? So it, it's I underscore am underscore Ashley underscore Bishop. Um, or, I know quite a long one, or um, www.ashleybishophealth.co.uk. Fabulous. And of course, your uh, Facebook fit. Dad, oh yeah, um, A B Kids Fit Club. Um, a B Kids did Kids Fit Club, brilliant. Yeah, and we're going to sort out the. Uh, there's a there's a there's a Facebook group. Um, we're going to set up the same uh, page name. We're going to go live tomorrow, and uh, we've also then got that on YouTube as well. We're trying to cover every base. Nice, Serena. Where can we come and be shifters? Yes. Um, so www.wholeshiftwellness.com is our website we have um lots of fun free downloads and scorecards on there but then also uh, our social medias are quite active facebook and, and instagram that the our handle is at whole shift wellness brilliant thank you so much and matthew you're all going to be a man. matthew's got a list like this he's the busiest man but he's got it all under control matthew where can we connect with you buddy there are um uh a number of ways to connect with myself um if you come across instagram there's a lot of um content and posts out there in the health and nutrition practice for matthew white health and nutrition um alternatively on linkedin matthew white or if you want to see other dynamic elements of what i provide um through my personal page on facebook which is matthew white brilliant Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Well, thank you. Um, thank you to the couple of dads who are also on the video call here. Where is Darren? Let me just, do you want to come and wave, Darren? Come on, Darren. Come and wave to everyone. Where is he? He's got his, he's got his video on. There he is anyway. That's his name. <laughs> <laughs> But a real, but thank you. I've got loads of people over on uh, on Facebook: Chris Hart, Chris Howard, Olivia Hawkins, Rachel Nella, Anastasia, uh, Spencer, another Chris, Cheyenne, Manda, Nicola Moore, Sarah Jane. So absolutely loads of people all over. Um, I hope they've enjoyed it as much as I have, guys and gal. Thank you so much for being here. It's the Team Super Dad Expert Hangout. We're back next Monday. I'm working on a couple of different uh, themes, depending on who I can pull in. It's either going to be around sort of managing our emotions, anger management type type stuff, um, or uh, money. Basically, uh, hell. Uh, basically, we've done some health stuff today, so uh, next week it could well be wealth. Guys, thanks again. Really appreciate it, and I'll uh, see you all soon. Cheers. Thank you. Bye. -bye. Thanks. Bye. Wow, that was awesome. Thank you so much for watching till the end. That was the Team Superdad Expert Hangout. Team Superdad is about dads having their best life ever. Dads who want more from life. To be more, to make more, to play more. We bring experts in on these calls so that you can get input and advice and guidance in all areas of finance, fitness, faith, fun, family and focus. 
we are a group of dads who w want more. We're up to stuff. We're busy. We're working together and we're pushing through those challenges, the ups and downs, whether you're a single dad, still in your family, it really is about having the life that you deserve. So if you're interested in finding more about that, then come on over to the Facebook group. That is facebook.com forward slash group forward slash team super dad. Or of course, come over to the team super dad.com website. I'd love to have you over there. Come and join, um, give us your email address, connect, get the regular emails and find out exactly what you can do to have more in your life. My name is Johnny Jensen. This is Team Super Dad out. I'll see you on the next video. Bye.